Hey guys, welcome to a brand new story, and we're gonna be playing Shadows of Saint 4. So I think I got everything set up um, for the most part. Okay, let's just go ahead and restart this one. This one is more of a, like it says here, romance, mystery, a little bit more horror. Um, no, which is scary to me, but um, we're gonna go ahead and give this a little try. Um, I'm nervous. <laughs> oh. Great, and we sound a bit creepy right about the beginning. Your story is about to begin, but first she's what you want to look like. Um Hmm. I don't know, I'm doing between I like this version um of her and this version of her. Um with this one um maybe something a little different um let's see let's fool around with her hairs this would have a lot better uh you can already see that we have much better options than when we started like uh, cells in the fog or um moonborn so that's great um mm -hmm. oh that's cute i think i like this one the best I'm gonna go with dark hair. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, okay, we actually choose our name now as well, which is great. Um, go ahead and hit OK. Um, I look uh, great. Yeah, let's start again. Chapter 1 A Mysterious Letter. Sunshine, you brought me to church again? What for? What are you talking about? It's about to begin. Don't stand in the aisle. Someone touched your shoulder. The man was waiting for you to sit down so he could do the same. Sorry. The mass began and voices subsided slowly. Not wanting to interfere, you also sat down. The Lord works in mysterious ways. We hear this all the time, right? Yeah. Does anyone know what it means? That we have no power over our fate. It means, my children, that we cannot predict our fate, and we cannot possibly understand all the causal relationships, but the time will come when you will understand everything. You turned around and the sound of the bells. Okay, so we're starting out already creepy. <laughs> when you turned back again, the priest had disappeared along with all the other people at the mass. Mom? The bells rang louder. Standing up from the bench, you went still, confused, listening to how the ringing intensified as if approaching. The choice you make will change the course of the story. Oh no. The change plots slightly, others lead to larger changes. Um. I have no contacts here. What the heck? Okay, sorry, I was getting a screenshot. Um. Look out the window, slightly open the door. Look out the window because sunlight streamed in from the street. You got up on your toes and looked out the window. I mean, I don't want to let it in. Whatever. There was no one outside the church. It was as if you were in an abandoned town and you had imagined the whole crowd a moment before. It's so creepy here. Maybe I can find someone outside? The bell stopped ringing. Gathering your courage, you flung open the doors of the church. Where am I? You headed off into the unknown, hoping to get into the city. The church was left behind, tucked away among the trees. Oh my god. Mom? Mom, can you hear me? Where did everything go? You tripped over something and hit the ground. The taste of blood spread over your tongue. Ouch. You got up, cleaned yourself off, and only then you saw what it was in your path. Is that, is this a corpse? What does it look like? You flinched, not expecting to see anyone else here. Oh, thank God you're here. Something strange is happening. Where did everyone go? Who, who is this? Who, this guy? The policeman grinned. 
It's your first victim. What are you talking about? Your eyes stopped on sight of your bloody hands clutching a knife. The shock made your fingers go soft and the knife fell, sticking into the blood-soaked ground. What did you think? That no one would know about this? You thought maybe it wasn't you who killed him and you're not a murderer, or what? That's right, you're a murderer, a stone-cold killer. Stop! A soulless, violent murderer. In this story, events unfold in different time periods of present and past. Whenever the timeline changes, a tip will notify you about this. You woke up sweating. The crumpled blanket tangled somewhere at your legs and your neck numb from sleeping on the couch. Present day. You touch your chest, trying to calm your beating heart. The policeman's gloating laughter still rang in your ears. Suddenly, someone knocked at the door. The clock shows 6.06 p.m. I wonder who that could be. I wasn't expecting Wayne one this evening. But there was no one behind the door. A crisp yellow envelope lay on the floor. It was marked from Mrs. Hill, an invitation to my funeral. That's weird. Uh, yeah, that a lot weird with that. I this is what she looked like older. It's interesting. You returned to the sofa, looking over the envelope. You had a strange feeling inside, as if you were again in the twilight world of dreams. I mean, why not? Hmm. The letter is written by hand. You opened it up. Dear Melody, the letter began in a sweeping handwriting. I understand this is all very surprising. Perhaps you have completely forgotten the old owner of the antique shop, telling you unreasonable stories. That is why I've decided to remind you of me in this particular way. Life has scattered you to other parts of the world. I will not hear your joyous lilting, nor I will, will, nor I will not see you running by. But I understand. You, the youth, are in search of a better life. It is true. We are the creators of our fate, but after a time, the only place for us is in the museum. And so, my time has come. We will meet in our memories. Below, there was a time and place of the funeral service. What a weird letter. Pretty like, much like Mrs. Hill herself. You remembered her wrinkled but kind face. She always had this sly look, as if she knew something that others would love to hear about. You imagine how she wrote this letter, sitting in her shop amidst all the old rubbish. And for some reason, your heart began to beat even harder, and a chill raced down your spine. I can't believe it. You look down at the letter again. I haven't ever been back to St. Four. I left there ten years ago, hoping never to return. So many times I meant to go visit my parents, and at the last moment I stayed back, not finding the strength to return there. And now this letter. Maybe it will be good to go back now? There was a silence in the apartment for a long while. You stood frozen in thought, clutching the letter in your hands. The decision was final. Yes, you would go. You couldn't hide forever. But then you immediately felt uneasy again. To remove the option of changing your mind, you dialed your mom's number, told her about the letter, and said you'd be coming to same four. After a short, slightly awkward conversation, you froze again, considering everything. The funeral's tomorrow. I have to get ready now. I should at least choose what to wear to get away from all these thoughts. How uh, this black dress is kind of shapeless. We got a black jumpsuit. That's nice. Okay, it's just these two options. Okay. All of a sudden we go with the jumpsuit. Much better. Reserved but tasteful. Just what I need. I'll gather the rest of my things in the morning. My eyes are shutting down. Maybe I should go to bed. As soon as your head touched a pillow, you fell asleep, and you had restless dreams all night long. Okay. The flight passed by in a blink. You didn't have time to look back before you found yourself in St. Four in this small town on the outskirts. I haven't been here in so many years, and everything's just the same. As if I never left. You watched the houses pass by outside the taxi window. You thought about who lived here before and who might still. Um, here then, here then was a school. There was a time when you hated it. 
And here was your favorite cafe. Interestingly, that dear old man still worked there. What was his name? And here, Mrs. Hill Antique Shop. The letter that you kept in your pocket began to burn, and a wave of chills um, washed over you again. Am I really back in St. Four? After all, after everything that happened? The taxi drove up to your old house. Asking the driver to wait, you rolled the suitcase to the entrance and took the keys from under the rug, where they were usually hidden. There was nobody at home, so you left the suitcase and headed back to the taxi. My parents are probably already at the funeral. The closer you were to your destination, the more excited you got. You could not explain the feeling. Soon the towers of the church appeared. Let's hope it's not as creepy in the beginning. It's a little old, but not as nearly as creepy. The entire town seemed to be attending Mrs. Hill's funeral. Somewhere in the corner, they played the piano, which is as old as anything in her antique shop, for sure. Church songs are played, and they send goosebumps down your back. Fine, is a little loud. Turn it down a bit. You remember yesterday's dream. That same priest was here, as if to remind you. He was standing near Mrs. Hill's casket, having a few words with everyone who approached it. I understand, but now she's in a better place. Flowers were laid out everywhere. From their cloying scent, there was not much air to breathe, and the noise of the crowd gave you a heart headache. You wanted to escape. You were suddenly surprised by the fact that you had left everything just to say goodbye to a woman you hardly knew. What am I doing here? Um, we came all this way, I might as well stay. I hope this wraps up quickly, but I can't leave. I can't do that to Mrs. Hill. My parents should be around here somewhere. You started looking for relatives in the crowd. Hi, honey. Oh, mom looks cute. Mom, I was just looking for you. Hi. You embraced, but it felt awkward, like all your conversation in recent years, as the strangers were trying to pretend that they were still close. And yet, it was close. It's a pity that in order for us to see you here, poor Mrs. Hill needed to retire to another world. Wow. Really? Okay. All right. So we started right up. All right. Mm-hmm. Melody? I didn't expect to see you here. I'm pleasantly surprised. I'm sure Mrs. Hill is glad as well. Uh, yeah, I guess. It's great that you all remember her and came to say goodbye. It says a lot about your group. Group? Yes, Candy and Bobby are here too. Derek hasn't left the city, so I was not too surprised by his appearance. I can call them if you like. I'm sorry you didn't know. No, no, don't. Are you sure? You were all so close. Yes, it, it's fine. I'll catch up with them later. As you wish, you can sit down. The prayer will begin shortly. You and your mother sat down on the bench. In church, you've always felt out of place. You tried to focus on the words of the priest, but your thoughts were all over the place. Among the guests, you noticed Candy, your best childhood friend. Your eyes met briefly. There she is. Once you were inseparable, now you both avoided your eyes, pretending to be strangers. You looked at her again. Candy seemed to be listening intently to the priest, clearly trying to avoid looking in your direction. Okay. Apparently remembering the past is hard for her too. Soon the prayers were sung and the final words were said. Everyone began to diverge. Should we head home? Drive together in silence, frantically grasping at topics for conversation? No thank you. Okay, so we have eyes of courage or caution or image. She's what is right for you. Eyes of courage, caution or image, okay. What should I answer? Um, I'd rather walk is really aggressive. I mean, she's still her mom, even though she was being aggressive right off the bat. That's still kind of fucked up. Um, I mean, it won't be for that long. I'm just going to say let's go. Oh, good. You're back. Melody? Yes? Oh, I guess she had walked away. And then so I came back to say, okay, yeah, I'll go with my mom. So she looked kind of happy. Can I have a word with you? I'll wait for you in the car. That's okay. I'll get a taxi. 
I got out of it anyway. But at least, at least I don't look like a bit total bitch to my mom, you know? That's messed up. Um, mom left and the priest talked for a long time about how important it was for the Mrs. Hill that you and your other guys showed up to say goodbye to her. When he fell silent, your head ached even more than at the beginning of the funeral. Then the priest said goodbye and headed off for priestly business. Phew. Honestly. There was almost no one left in the church. Okay, we got a caution point. I guess we'll just go caution. Um. Or should we be courageous? But like, as you saw, like courageous like almost implies like freaking rude. You know what I mean? I don't know, I guess if it was me, in like a, a scary movie type deal situation, I would be super cautious because I'm a very paranoid person. <laughs> anyway, there was nothing more to do there. Goodbye, Mrs. Hill. You headed outside. So yeah, I think we'll go with caution. The sky was blanketed in clouds and it's overcast as usual in St. Four. You didn't want to go home. The sky crackled with lightning and the wind picked up. Lanterns illuminated the wide road along which you walked. It wasn't so late, but there was no one on the street. It seemed the town was dying down for, with the setting of the sun. How often did I return home along the street under the light of these lanterns? Your legs just carried you forward. You didn't know where you were going. You just walked, looking at the houses on either side of the road. It began to drizzle a bit, and chills ran all over your body. You thought that you might catch cold. Maybe I can still get a cap? Um, I mean, how long do you have to go? I mean, I guess you can call for like an Uber or something. Yeah, I'll just call the cab. When you tried to call a taxi, the connection failed. What the heck? You look at the phone screen. No connection. Fantastic. What a lovely little city. You shrugged your shoulders, but soon calmed down and stopped trembling entirely. Okay, the walk won't hurt me. I haven't walked like this in a long time, just by myself. Here, even the rain smells special. Sometimes I dream about it at night. That smell. Your thoughts drifted off far into the past, and when you looked up, you saw a lake house in front of you. Okay. I don't think that was the way home. How did I get here? You remember how, in bad weather, you used to sit with friends at the lake house. On the one hand, the memory resonated unpleasantly in your chest. But on the other hand... At night, the house seemed uninhabited, as if it had been abandoned a dozen of years or more. The humidity in the lake made you feel even colder. You pulled in the smell of the stagnant water. Your first impulse was to return, but now your legs seemed to have a mind of their own. Something pulled you in towards it, um, something inexplicable. You were already heading up to the house when you heard a crackling sound from behind. The branches gave way under obvious feet. Who's there? A figure emerged from behind the trees, moving towards you. Uh, 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 run? Fear paralyzed your body, and for a moment you froze. But after a second's pause, you ran to the side of the house, not sure where you were going. Your legs moved by themselves, and you had no idea you could run that fast. Hey, wait! His familiar voice stopped you in your tracks. Oh, bitch. As the man came closer, you asked uncertainly. B Bobby? It's me. Who else would it be? How can I know? I don't even know. You scared the crap out of me. So you came here too. I thought I was alone. I thought I was too. There was silence. You looked off in different directions as if you had met in a store. Like you were pretending that you don't know each other. Well, I have to go. Um, I accidentally wandered here. Nice to see you. Bobby grabbed your arm. Come on. We both understand why we came. We do? Well, of course. Since we're here, let's have a look in there. What do we have to do? Um... I mean, we're already here. Yes, perhaps we should. But only for a couple of minutes. Just take a quick look. I don't want to be here for long. It's creepy here. Yeah, I know the feeling. This whole city is it's just... Yeah, I know. Let's go. It's cold. Jumanji's on the fucking table. Oh hell no. The roll that came out into the lake. No. We are not playing that. 
It's as if I returned to the past. <laughs> Everything was as it was long ago. It even seemed that the things you had abandoned the last time you were here lay resting in the same place. Same sofa, same pillows, same light scattered mess. Why are there lit candles here? Yeah, that's weird. Out of the corner of your eye, you notice something moving. Who's there? Someone's hand took hold of the candelabrum and brought it to their face, revealing who stood before you. What a gathering. It was worth the wait. Was it? I didn't expect to see you. Since we all came to the funeral of Mrs. Hill, how could we not end up here, right? Candy grinned. Yeah, it's a sweet little house. I want more, I want more photos. You know what's weird though? Sorry. Don't mind me. I'm just... <laughs> What's weird, though? When was the last time we all came to St. Four? Everyone was silent. Then you quietly added, A long time ago. And what made you come this time? Was it the news of poor Mrs. Hill? Tell the truth. Did you get a letter from her, too? Yes. Everyone was silent again, not finding the words or reasons to leave. The rain intensified. The wind howled harder and harder, gusting through the windows. It felt like cold air was bleeding through the windows frames. Soon a real downpour began. There was no cell connection and it became clear to everyone that you could not leave the house until the rain subsided. I found a couple of blankets here. They seem warm and comfy. It's cold. Take one. Thank you. Bobby sat at the table pondering and you and Candy settled on the couch. Well, so how are you? Um, good. I'm good. And you? Oh, everything is wonderful. Thank you. Everyone was silent again. <laughs> that like awkward first chat. It's like, yeah, sure, I'm totally good. You wanted to leave, but you stayed put. It was evident that the others felt the same way. If we're stuck here, can we talk? The silence is killing me. What about? I don't know. It's just that we all seem to have changed so much since... Okay, let's not talk about the past, especially in this atmosphere. Well, besides the past, we have nothing in common. Melody, you're not from St. Four, right? You and your parents moved here when we were in high school. Yeah, that's right. You're from Connecticut. Connecticut? I lived in Baltimore, actually. Where do you live now? I'm back in Baltimore. After St. Four, any city seems livable. What was your first impression of St. Four? I can only imagine the horror. <laughs> yeah. I remember my parents frisking around uh, with the move, unpacking things, and I didn't even want to help them. I just sat on the porch and thought about what kind of a hole this was. Flashback time. That was 10 years ago. It seems like an eternity has passed and at the same time as if it all happened yesterday. Melody, let's go into the house. You can help, said the autumn of 86. I don't want to be here. Mom sat down beside you on the steps. Oh, come on now. Towns like St. Four are a great place to spend the last of your school years to make some lasting memories. After that, you can go wherever you want. We're not going to keep you here. No need to be grumpy about it. Tomorrow is your first day of school. Go and meet all the boys. You won't even notice it all happening, uh, it happening as this city becomes your family. But what are we supposed to do around here? Well, there may not be so many things to do like in Baltimore, but still. Back in the city, you used to just sat around in bed and didn't do anything. And here, just look how beautiful it is here. And the air. Mmm. <laughs> it's a cute little house. That tree is kind of cute. It kind of looks like it has a little face in it. Right? There's a little nose and little eyes. Anyway. Um. I mean, let's not be a party pooper. It's not so bad. I think I'll get used to it quickly. Don't worry. Really? Do you like it here? Yeah, it's all right, I guess. Oh, honey. Mom hugged you and kissed the top of your head. Dad got in trouble in Baltimore, but here he will not have those problems out here. Sort of trouble. If you don't want to help unpack things, you can go for a walk. You love nature. Apparently I love nature anyway. 
Have you seen the forest here? It's fabulous. Okay, I'll go for a long walk. Just stop trying to sell me the city. All right, all right. But don't stay out too late, got it? All right, cool. The forest smelled really fresh. For a moment, you stopped being angry. There are no massive old trees like this in Baltimore. Many of them were covered with moss, making the forest seem particularly green. It was quiet, but as soon as you heard steps approaching, but soon you heard steps approaching from behind you. Cute. <laughs> a guy rushed past, apparently up for a jog. After a couple of minutes, he came running back toward you again. Your eyes met and he stopped, deciding that this was a reason to introduce himself. Oh, uh, well, how about this weather, huh? Only the beginning of the year and the, already the sky is... Wait, beginning of the year? Didn't they just say it was the autumn? Already the sky is covered with clouds, but I guess it's pretty much for the norm for St. Four. Yeah, it's really chilly and gloomy here. My name is Luke. He extended his hand, hesitating for just a moment. You stretched yours out too. Melody. Wow, damn, Luke. Yes. Should I not have brought him up? Why not? It's fine. He's part of our story, whatever it is. Outside, the rain began to subside, but the wind was still wailing wistfully. The heat of the candles made the house warmer. So what happened next? What? Oh, right. So then, I'm just, I'm just narrating, apparently. Nice to meet you, Melody. I haven't seen you around before. I, I knew it was autumn. You told me at the beginning of the year. <laughs> Are you new here? Yes. Passing through or here to stay? You shrugged your shoulders. For an undetermined amount of time, I guess. You can change clothes and hairstyle any time by pressing the wardrobe button. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I see. You are worrying about the place a little. I was a little nervous too when I first got here. You're not from around here either? No, I'm from Chicago. My family moved here a year ago. Oh, cool. So he kind of knows what it's like to be new to a, a new town. I'm doing it this way because I figure it might look better later. Anyway. Um... Now let me just ask how he feels about it. Yes, very much. It's beautiful here and there's a lot to see. I'd love to run in the morning through the woods. In Chicago, we just had the lake, which is flat. It might look like there's nothing to do in St. Four, but I, I found plenty to do. I'm sure you'll like it here too in time. I really hope so. Okay, I should get going. So soon? <laughs> Did I scare you off? No, no, it's just... Luke nodded knowingly, never ceasing to smile. Pleased to meet you. Same to you. See you at school, I imagine? Yes, of course. Luke waved and jogged on deep into the forest. Okay. So we met someone new. Fun. He's cute and looks like Leonardo DiCaprio. Let's put it out there. When you returned home, it was already dark. The moon was shining overhead and the street lights helped it light the road. No people and no cars. You walked straight along the middle of the road. Wait. Even if you don't see any cars, do not walk in the middle of the street. That's what the sidewalks are for. I can see sidewalks from here. Stay on the sidewalk. That's number one. Anyway, the school year begins tomorrow. Thoughts about tomorrow and returning to school dishearten you. You don't know anyone and nobody knows you. All eyes fixed on you, all the judging of first opinions being formed. Okay, well, Luke seems like a nice guy anyway. Maybe the rest of the town will be equally friendly? Memories of meeting Luke distracted you from the gray reality. The future was not looking too interesting. I'll have to spend high school in this tiny provincial town. Oh my god. <laughs> Quit whining. Thoughts swirled in your head, but your attention was suddenly caught by a blinking streetlight. Stopping to look, you waited up until it lit up fully and then went on. After a couple more steps, the next lamp began to blink. You turned around and saw the one behind you blink and then turn off. What's going on? Fear welled from somewhere deep within you. 
Your heart raced. You took a couple of steps back, peering intensely towards the end of the street, swallowed by the night where the lights had all gone out. And then you ran. Your heart had almost stopped by the time you reached your front door, but looking back, all the lights were on, as if nothing had ever been wrong with them. <laughs> I fucked up. Wait, I have three image? From what? Wait, wait, wait. Maybe from not leaving the funeral, because that probably was a bad look. Um... Uh, maybe from not being bitchy to people. I don't know. Maybe that's number two. Maybe. I don't. I don't know what the points for. They didn't even say that I got image. Um, but I guess I'm doing well in image, which is great. Sure. Okay. Let's just go and play um episode two. I don't fully know. Um, okay. Great, thanks. Up to date, wait. Um, some new stories are coming out today. Hold on, I'm just doing a quick check. Okay. No, they're not posted yet. I thought the game just updated. I was about to be like, whoa. Immerse in the memories, you will have to relive everything again, even if you don't want to remember it at all. Alright. Let's go ahead and press play. They're still in my tea. The computer is dying. <laughs> not happy about this. That's so okay. Okay. It's quiet again. Okay. <laughs> Chapter 2. Welcome to Saint 4. All night long you were plagued by nightmares. In the morning your eyes could barely open and it was gray and dull outside. It wasn't shaping up to be the best day of your life. I don't want to go anywhere or do anything. I feel like that a lot. There was nothing in the room yet, just bare walls and a mattress in the corner. It made everything seem even less cozy. Okay, this isn't gonna work. I gotta decorate this place. What should I do with it? Okay, so I think we get to choose how we want our room to look. I'm gonna click. It's a lot of yellow. Okay, it's an interesting bed. Okay. Okay. Nah. I have way too much floral. Are you going to show me around the room? No, I just have to decide from this image. I don't even remember <laughs> what that side looked like. Uh, this is stylish? For real? Nah. I'm going with the simple room. That looks the best. You kidding me? I like this. This is like nice and funky, kind of vibrant, pretty retro. Well, I guess it wouldn't be retro at the time because it's the 80s. But now at least I won't step all over boxes and have my own little nook in the corner. Mom came into the room. Oh, you finally unpacked your things. When did you find time? Just now. It turned out pretty good. Should we go? You've got to be on, on time for your first day. Oh, we did this all day before school? Dang! So she built all that IKEA stuff? That's crazy. <laughs> Saint Four High School. You gazed silently out the window the entire ride, thinking about how you would have to spend at least a couple of years here. Mom was also silent, thinking it's better not to disturb you now. Arriving at school, she turned in your direction, waiting for you to say something. When you didn't, she asked, Are you worried? Um, yeah, I mean, a little. That's normal. I'm sure that by the end of the day, you will already have made some friends with someone. Good luck, honey. Thanks, Mom. Why are they playing the sad music? <laughs> the schoolyard was crowded in the morning. All the voices and the noises from the approaching cars merged into a single ca cacophony. Cacophony. I don't remember. Who's the new girl? You slowly walked toward the main entrance, taking everything in. But suddenly you ran to some kind of gorilla who appeared abruptly in front of you. Almost losing your balance, you dropped your bag and all your notebooks scattered right in front of the school entrance. You know, you see that a lot in movies, but I'm like, wasn't that shit in your bag? 
Did you like unzip that while you were walking for you to then trip over and then for all of it to fall out? Like. <laughs> Maybe she was carrying her hands. Hey, watch where you're going. What should I do? Um. She said he appeared out of nowhere. I mean. Wait, is this a caution or what's the name choice? Courage choice? What would I actually do? Should I just play how would I would actually do? I probably would apologize. I don't know. Sorry, I did notice you. The guy turned around slowly, watching in silence for a couple of seconds, sizing you up. It's all right. I didn't notice you either, clearly. He began to help you collect your notebooks, but when you went to take one of them, he held on to it. You're too good for this school. You'll be eaten alive here. I think I'll manage without your advice. Thanks. My name's Michael. He tried to pick up the last fallen notebook, but he beat you to it. Remember my name, baby. You'll be saying it more than once. I doubt that. We'll see. I'm not impressed. Michael held out your notebook and disappeared into the crowd, rushing into the school. Gathering your thoughts, you followed him. Saying it more than once. See, for real? The teacher had not yet arrived, so the class was very chaotic. Someone was laughing loudly, others sitting on their desks. You froze in the aisle, looking intently for a place where you could sit. Oh, another victim. There was some chuckles. You didn't really understand how that was funny. Among the taking desks, you noticed a free place. You didn't even have time to take the seat before the mocking began again. What's up, newbie? Such a grumpy face. Are you afraid of us? <laughs> the whole class began to laugh. Their nasty giggles made you feel sick, but you could not show your weakness. What should I do? Should I just, like, laugh it off? Um, okay, let me review the situation again. Okay, so he's like, are you afraid of us? In that situation, I probably would do an awkward giggle and just sit. I'm being honest. <laughs> I don't like confrontation. <laughs> this is way too much attention for me. No, no, everything is fine. Your tense felt false smile made your face hurt. Stop laughing. It's your face that's sickening her. You can't see that? Don't pay any attention to him. I'm Candy, by the way. Mrs. Baker's coming. They all sat down and the noise subsided. Uh-oh. The teacher came into the classroom. She stopped at her desk, looked at Candy, giving her a long, inspecting look, and then slowly turned her eyes to you. Her face flinched. She shook her head, looking around the room as if afraid, and sat down. What's the matter with her? Don't pay attention to that. She's strange. Maybe she has a nervous tick or something? Miss Baker just arrived in town a week before you did, by the way. Actually, she arrived long before that. Well, you told me so. I couldn't say that. What difference does it make? She lived for a long time in St. Ford, but she started to work as a teacher at our school only a couple of weeks before that day. Yes, exactly. Do we clear that up? Can I continue? <laughs> Melody, right? Yes? Welcome to St. Four, Melody. The teacher shook her head again, dictated the assignment, and then began to walk around the desk and hand out papers. The teachers were told to give each student some of these so you can pass them out to your friends. If anyone's seen Sam, if they, uh, they should contact the Sheriff Nixon. Is everyone clear? In a whisper, the whole school is already plastered with them. But we're given a few more copies to take back home as if it's going to help find him. Psst. Derek. What's the news, by the way? With what? Nobody washed ashore? Did your dad say anything? God, you're such a jerk. He didn't say anything. And it's none of your business. How is it not? We all live here. How did this guy disappear? You turn and talk to Candy, but from the next row up, Derek interjected. Don't pay it any mind. 
It's just an isolated case. First of its kind in Saint Four. First of its kind, what? Derek fell silent. Candy squirmed a bit in her chair. You looked around and noticed everyone whispering. You felt an odd feeling that something was being omitted for your benefit. Something was obviously bothering everyone, and that made you uneasy. He disappeared a couple of days ago when... She wanted to ask something further, but she was stopped by the teacher's voice. Melody, Candy, did you finish the assignment? I feel like this leads, I feel like I kind of remember, vaguely remember this leading to an image thing. But I don't remember the, the answer. If I say yes and I don't know the answer, then... Uh, I'm, I'm saying no. So perhaps instead of talking, you should focus on that. Miss Baker's face twitched again. She seemed to be frightened of something. She closed her eyes, nervously folding her hands, and then with a sharp movement, grabbed a notebook and started flipping through it. Her behavior was a bit scary. You had the feeling that you were checking in on a very sick person. As soon as Miss Baker was focused on the notebook, Derek rejoined the conversation. I hope Sam just ran away from home. I don't know, but his dad is looking for him. Derek's dad is the sheriff here. Wow, great. Depends on how you want to look at it. The conversation drifted to a close. You looked out the window, abandoning your attempts to focus on the task. It was overcast. You'd never seen any other weather in St. Four. Therefore, the fog, it was just possible to see the crooked out oh, through the fog. <laughs> oh, sorry, that. therefore, through the fog, it was just possible to see the crooked branches of the trees shifting around in the wind. They knocked a bit at the window and scratched against the glass as if they were long, creepy, thin arms, sending a chill down your spine. To rid yourself of the thought, you closed your eyes and shook your head. And when you looked out the window again, the branches no longer seemed quite so ominous. Everything about this place makes me shiver. Melody, maybe you can manage to complete the assignment at least by the end of the period? I don't think I can. No? Well, not a great start, day one. I'd advise you, Melody, to get your hand in the game or this will not turn out well for you. You notice the mockery of your classmates and realize that those who don't do well with tests and stuff are not well liked here. Miss Baker, Miss Baker gave you the creeps too. Wait, so people who don't do well in school are not that well liked here? Is that what they're trying to say? Now she stared at you as closely as she had earlier with Candy. Her lips were twisted in disgust, and her eyes seemed to be studying your very soul. The fuck? Okay, this class isn't gonna be easy, that's for sure. You got an F? She opened her journal and slowly proceeded to write something in it. Say why I couldn't just do the assignment. That's number one. Number two, I should just go and fail me right off the bat. Do I even know the subject material? I just moved to the school. Shouldn't there be like at least a day or two of like makeup work or something to like catch me up or figure out where I am? No, nah, none of that. You fell silent at once when you heard the floorboards creaking under someone's feet. Who's there? Hush. Everyone froze watching a high shuttle appear in the window and then pass by. The footsteps continued slowly, stopping at the door. Oh, I finally just told him to hush. Why am I going to then go and ask who's there? Should I just get up and open the door? I mean, so far it hasn't been anything that bad. I mean, he could have said something. Get up and open the door. The second fled into far too long. Unable to wait, you jumped off the couch and opened the door. Oh. Your heart was beating somewhere up into your throat. You wanted to scream even though you recognized Derek in the shadows. There was nothing really to be afraid of, but the fear at your core almost made you scream out. You quickly pulled yourself together, not showing that you were scared. Oh, it's Derek. Uh, what are you guys doing here? Isn't it obvious? No, it's really not. Do you not understand that you're breaking the law? What are you talking about? This house is my property, and I didn't invite you. Okay. Derek is very grouchy. <laughs> okay. But he looks a lot better than he did when he was a kid. I'm just telling you that. <clears throat> okay. 
So, people we got going on right now, Luke, Michael, um, Candy, Bobby, and Derek. I guess we'll see. Um, I didn't invite you. This house belongs to all of us. Does it? You all left and you haven't been here for how long? 11 years? 12? This house is mine now. I don't know if it works like that. I thought when he said that he owned it, that meant that he bought it. He just seen that it's his because we kind of left. But you talk as if you're accusing us of something. I am. I understand why you left, but whatever happened, you shouldn't have given up everything. Especially after what happened. Derek sat on the sofa, took out a pack of cigarettes, and nervously lit one. Gross. Anyone want one? Double gross. No. Do not smoke. No thanks. Not a smoker. Commendable. He lit a match, casting light on his face. He got old. So what are you doing here? We don't really know. You looked out the window, the moon peeped out from behind the clouds, its light reflected on the surface of the lake. The rain's all done, I think. We can head home if we want. Everyone was silent, continuing to sitting in their places. And yet this place holds it holds us in place. It didn't want to let us go. No one dared to break the silence, so you continue your story. You agree with Candy to meet after school and go home together. Uh, while you're waiting for her at the entrance of the school, someone called out to you. Hey, new girl. Hi. How was your first day of school? Um. <laughs> Way too much attention was on me. Um. And I got an F. It, it, it was pretty awful. Let's just be honest. Why? What happened? I got an F on the first day. Everyone was whispering about it. Don't worry. It'll take a couple of days and everyone will forget about you. Well, that sounds grand. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, they'll forget that you're new. But I'll definitely not forget about you. I wanted to ask. Let's go somewhere. Say, a picnic in the forest? I would like to get to know you better. It is rare to meet someone interesting here in St. Four. No offense to the rest of the course. Well... I mean, how do you know that I'm interesting? We said like a few words together. It's only because I'm new. He's in, you know, whatever. I need some friends and I feel calm around him. It'd be foolish to refuse, I guess. Yes, of course. That would be great. Yeah, that would be great. Let me go off into the middle of the forest with some guy I just met. Really? Awesome. Then I'll pick you up for a five. Even he's surprised. <laughs> like, oh, really? You think that's a good idea? Yeah, let's go do that. Okay. As soon as she had finished talking, Candy approached. Their eyes met and for some time they did not look away, as if each of them did not dare to say hello first. Hi, Luke. Yes, hello. Okay, I gotta go. See you later. Luke left in a hurry and Candy kept looking behind him. As soon as he was out of sight, she turned to you. What were you talking about? Um, tell the truth, don't I? You asked me out on a date. What? And you agreed to it? Yes. What is it? I don't really mind if you guys have something going on. It's just that me and Luke were a thing. Yes. Not for very long and it was stupid. So don't pay any attention to me. Shall we? Can Candy strongly pulled on your arm. You had no choice but to obey and follow. I guess. I mean, that is a creepy ass dog. Oh my god! On the way home, an antique shop caught your attention. Once in Baltimore, you were in a similar place to this one. You remembered the feeling of time frozen in the air. Candy noticed your look. This is Mrs. Hill Antique Shop. Something consider her. Someone consider her crazy, but to me, she's just an ordinary woman, frozen in time. Do you want to go in? Um. Yeah. Let's. The bell chimed announcing your arrival. An old woman, apparently Mrs. Hill, stood on a ladder trying to reach a book from the shelf. I should be careful. Yeah, Mrs. Hill, you'll fall. Get down from there. She turned around, almost losing her balance. Okay. 
Also, I wouldn't have shouted at her to frighten her. Because we just rolled up. <laughs> oh my god. Candy baby. It's been a long time since you last visited. I... Mrs. Hill climbed down the ladder and out of breath wrapped Candy in a warm hug. It's okay, I get it. The important thing is that you came. As a child, antiques awakened your imagination. You like to imagine the story hidden there, within each of them. But the thing, things here were different. They made you feel nervous. Every item gave you chills. I haven't seen you here before. My parents and I just moved to St. Four a couple of days ago. Is that so? That's so nice. We very rarely have new people coming here. Baby will be glad to meet you too. Baby, come, come. A dog ran out from the hallway. Oh, hello. At first she wagged her tail, glad to see her master calling, uh, calling her, but then she turned to you. What is it with you? The dog's eyes were bloodshot and her mouth foamed with anger. She slowly approached, approached you, exuding nothing but pure hatred. What is it with her? Baby? Stop it. You and Candy backed away, trying to keep your distance from the dog. Her paws tightened. She crouched low, intending to pounce. You froze in fear. The dog jumped. You and Candy recoiled in horror. Oh, hide behind a chair. Ow! Baby's teeth almost clenched onto your leg, but at the last second, you and Candy managed to hide behind a chair. I mean, I'm not trying to hurt the dog, but like, come on! The dog, in a rage, tore off a piece of cloth and fluff flew out of the chair. Mrs. Hill grabbed the dog by the collar. Baby fell on her back, but immediately pulled herself together, ready to pounce again. You shoved the chair and it toppled forward, crashing into the animal. Baby whined. She scrambled out from under the chair and with her tail between her legs, ran away. What is it with her? She never behaves like that. Are you alright, girls? You tried your best to keep calm, but your stomach was all inside out from fear. I'm out of here! Hell no. You could still see the dog's bloodshot eyes reddened, insane, glazed with rage, and at the same time oddly too conscious for an animal. Hmm. Yeah. That's peculiar. The clock has stopped as well. Mrs. Hill pointed to the antique clock on the shelf, standing out among other things, mostly antiquarian junk. The second hand ticked back and forth as if something was holding it in place. Be careful, girls. The animal and the time are always aware of impending trouble. You just have to train your dog. Where did you get it from? She wasn't here before. She appeared out of nowhere yesterday. You know how cold the nights can get here in St. Four. Wait. Where did you get that from, Candy? Something in her voice alarmed you. You looked towards your friend with concern. Candy was holding a doll. It fell on me when your dog almost ate us alive. Hmm. Would you like to buy it from me? What do I need it for? It's not a coincidence that the doll landed in your arms. It chose you. This woman's trying to make a sell! <laughs> Katie rolled her eyes and smiled. What do you say, Melody? Um... Do you like it? Do you like it yourself? I don't even know. I had one just like this when I was a kid. But now I don't need such things, really. Maybe if it were a gift? You can take it for free. I don't mind. Okay, well, that's a little bit better. No, thanks. Well, as you wish. Melody, maybe you'd like to take a dream catcher? I don't know if I need one, really. There are different kinds, but I keep one only the strongest in my shop. These are uh, the charms of shamans that lived here for hundreds of years ago. The shamans made them to attract visions, be they pleasant or dreams or nightmares. With the help of a dream catcher, you can see images of trapped spirits in your dream. Fighting in a dream will make your spirit stronger and allow you to penetrate into the depths of your own consciousness. I see a sensitive nature in you. This charm will open up, up open your third eye. It is not necessary to always care with you. All you need is to have one in your possession. Pick one, darling. Okay. Um, there's a stylish one. Dreamcatcher of the leader of the shamans. A normal dreamcatcher. I mean, apparently I paid for this one, so... Check this one. 
<clears throat> Figure it might be the most effective. You've made a wise choice, Melody. Very soon, I'm quite um, sure you will be convinced of his power. Stop by any time. I'm always happy to have company. What a day. Yeah. Did you really believe what Mrs. Hill said back there? Not really, but I thought, why not take, uh, take it if it'll make her happy? Yeah. And her dog. God, it seemed like it was looking right into my eyes. My legs are still trembling. Sorry about that. Usually seeing Mrs. Hill is much more peaceful and pleasant. It's okay. Not your fault, clearly. See you tomorrow, then? It was nice to meet you. Yeah, absolutely. Same here. Cool. <laughs> Who knocked open that person's uh, milk box? It started to seem like a normal evening. The sun set behind the horizon, and twilight draped itself over St. Four. The street was empty as usual after the sunset, but the coming of night for some reason depressed you. Anxiety began to well up, and you started walking faster. The chiming of the bell clock rang out across the night. At first the sound was tolerable, but soon it became more and more loud. The vibrations made the roadside gravel beneath your feet. Fork in the road. Oh, okay. Caution. Going that way is the last thing I would do. You walked further, farther, uh, trying not to pay attention to the fear that was increasingly welling up inside you. You realized that you had been running when you reached school. You were completely out of breath and your legs trembled so violently that your knees were knocking against one another. <gasps> oh no. Hold up. The light was in on one of the windows. Oh god. It's strange there's someone at the school at this hour. You didn't want to go back. The chiming of the clock could still be heard in the distance, and the deserted street was more terrifying than ever. You decided to head into the school, at least until the sound stopped. You forgot something, Melody? Me? I see that you're afraid, and you should be. What are you talking about? Miss Baker's face twisted, either in fright or in anger. She drew herself in close to you. Miss Baker? The dog rushed at you. You felt her teeth sinking into your neck, and you woke up. Your heart pounded somewhere up near your throat. Your body trembled feverishly. Apparently today's events have given me nightmares. And when did I get home? Your dream catcher caught your attention. Huh? For a moment it seemed to have caught fire, but as soon as you brought it closer, the mysterious shine disappeared. That's strange. Does this thing actually work? It was still light outside the window. You looked at the unusually clear sky and a lot of various thoughts passed through your head. Your eyelids became heavy. In another mo moment, you'd have fallen asleep again, but the doorbell awakened you completely. You heard voices downstairs and then hasty steps up the stairs. The door opened. Did you fall asleep? Sorry, I didn't mean to wake you up. This is a bad time, probably? No, it's all right. I was just taking a nap. Will you wait a bit for me to get ready? Yes, of course. I'll just I'll be just outside. What should I wear? All right. Um that one's here. Mm, not a fan of jeans. That was kind of cute, but um I like this one. There's too much going on right now for me to worry about an elaborate outfit. I'll be comfortable in a sundress. You were about to leave, but Mom suddenly entered the room. Where are you going? Tell the truth. Luke invited me on a date. We we're going on a picnic in the woods. You're not going anywhere. Why? I just got a call from school. How did you manage to get an F on the first date? That's what I'm saying. You should tell them that. <laughs> There's just this teacher... You always have to have teachers to blame. Mom, seriously. Please? I should be making you stay home for the day. But you can go, considering a housewarming present. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Is everything all right? Luke stood at the door, holding a basket in his hands. Oh, he really got a picnic. 
The weather was surprisingly good, at least for St. Four, and your mood and gradually improved. How does she know fully what the weather is always like here? I don't know. Yes, everything's fine. When did you have time to dress up like that? Now I'll have to feel like a redneck next to you. <laughs> well, thanks. So, shall we head up to the Glade? Okay. So that's how I saw that I got an image. Did the, did the end of the... Blah, blah, blah. Did the other words pick... Did it pop up before and I just missed it? Or... I don't think that it did. Right? I don't know. Yeah, let's go. Almost an hour. Oh my god. That's super cute. Oh no. Can I, will I be able to get pictures of this? I don't know. The sun started to set. It wasn't warm, but the orange rays of sunset made it feel like it was late spring. You sat down on the blanket that Luke had brought. Are you hungry? A bit. Let's see what we have. Tea with sandwiches. Oh my gosh, that looks so yummy. Wine with croissants. Um, I'm going to go with the tea with sandwiches. That looks super cute. I love that. I would like something to warm up with and something a bit nutritious to eat. So hot tea and sandwiches? I've got you. Thank you. I used to spend time here often. I would come here to think. What about? Am I following my path or have my parents decided everything for me? They are chasing after unnecessary things and should my sister and I give up everything so that they can find what they don't really need? What are they chasing? Antiques. Serious ones. They are real connoisseurs of these things. Hmm. Interesting. It seemed to you that Luke said that this was a deep-seated resentment. As the forest floor cooled down, you unconsciously trembled. Luke noticed this and moved closer. I mean, it's pretty romantic, so snuggle up. You felt his um, breath on your neck and the warmth of his body. The, sh the shivers subsided. Your heat felt at ease for the first time since you moved here with your parents. What are you thinking about? About how good I feel now. I feel good with you too. The sun hid entirely behind the horizon. In an instant, clouds covered the sky. Thunder rumbled and a strong wind started to blow out of nowhere. We have to go. It's about to get very wet. <laughs> the wind picked up rapidly and tore the basket out of Luke's hand with a frenzy and started tearing the leaves off the trees. You and Luke tried to make sure that nothing important flew away. As you headed back, it was completely dark. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> That's hilarious. Do you know the way back? I'm a little confused about where we are. You had to shout louder than the raging storm that was taking over the forest in the city. I think so. You came to a crossroad. Left or right? I thought you said you knew where to go! Why are you asking me? Oh, no. Um, in a maze, I think you always go left. <laughs> left. You turned left, going through another glade. There were fresh puddles because of the rain. You slipped, but Luke managed to grab your hand. After another couple of minutes, you came back to where you came from. Oh no. Oh. Let's go right then? Well, apparently that was not correct. The rain wasn't strong, and you had already felt it more than once in St. Four. Um, but the darkness of the forest and the thought that you were lost made you cringe with fear. You walked clutching a deadly... You walked, clutching a deadly grip on Luke's hand, and with your eyes closed. Suddenly. Oh. You stumbled over something. What is it? In the dark, you didn't understand right away that it was a man. Step away. You didn't even manage to scream as Luke lifted you and pushed you aside. He touched the body, but even from afar, you could tell that this man was dead. He seemed made of wood. His mouth was open in a silent scream, and his wide open eyes stared at the sky. There was something wrong with them. Suppressing fear, you came closer. You did? What's with him? His eyes were black as if charred, instead of dry yellow forest grass beneath him. Rare flowers bloomed. You picked one of the buds. Luke peered into the face of the dead man and then abruptly recoiled, swayed, barely able to stand on his feet. <laughs> oh my god! It's so creepy. 
I know him. This is Sam. Oh, that's the boy who was missing from school. Hey. Um, I guess we'll go ahead and stop there for now. Um, yeah, this one gets is pretty freaking pretty wild. Um, yeah, I, I I don't know. I I'm excited. I I like the whole mystery vibes going on, but it's it's super creepy, and I'm gonna be super nervous. Like my heart, the story makes my heart race a bit. <laughs> so I'm nervous. Um, also I need to figure out who I should romance right now. It's feeling like Luke, but we're still early in the story. So I don't know how things turn out. I don't remember. Um, yeah, I feel like every every ally in the story has some bad habits or bad bits about their personality. So that'll be interesting. But anyway, thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you liked the video, go ahead and show it some love. And I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>